What's up, YouTube? It is Days Gabe with your host, Gabriel. Just wanted to uh, let you guys know the uh, time has come uh, to select my truck. I wanted to record this video in real time. Uh, I completed the training. Um, I'm going to go into a more in-depth uh, breakdown in another video as far as uh, uh, what's all entailed. Um, but I'm here with the, uh, with the truck. Uh, it is directly behind me. I don't know if you guys can see, it's, uh, they call it caramel brown in the list, but it looks more like, uh, <laughs> pumpkin spice. <laughs> Let me go ahead and flip the... Pumpkin spice orangey brown. Uh, gonna head inside and continue this, uh, continue this from there. All right guys, so <clears throat> I'm back in my room and uh, what a day, <laughs> what a day. I'm going to try to I said I was going to make another video about the upgrade process, but I think what I'm going to do is put it all into one and <clears throat> upload it unedited just to give you guys the, the raw unedited version of everything that's going on. Um, <clears throat> upgrade process. So. I was with my previous, with my instructor, um, and <clears throat> we were in touch with his fleet manager, who is now my fleet manager, to let him know or to ask at what point in the TNT mileage I was at so that we could get a handle on how much more time or how many more miles we had, had to do. So once we got that down, we had an idea as far as after what load we would then be routed into Springfield for the upgrade. Um, it could be any site, it could be Pittston or Salt Lake City, it just depends. Um, what I liked about my instructor is that <clears throat> he's very articulate, very clear, zero ambiguity unless he's using like advanced terminology where uh and i consider myself pretty smart um i mean not not like genius but i i made it into a doctoral pharmacy program which i then left because it was who wants to sit in a cube full of drugs that they can't take it's just like i forget it so <clears throat> My point is, is that, <laughs> I mean, this guy's on another level. Sometimes he uses words where it's like, what does that even mean? Um, point is, is that he made it very clear to his fleet manager, I want to get my student in for upgrade as soon as possible. Even if there are no trucks available, um, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. And let me tell you, his fleet manager is great. You know, he... he managers in the title but I mean they had more of like a business partner relationship it was it was really nice after the last load which was in uh, Texas I think it was Laredo they routed us right back into Springfield uh, I was cleared for upgrade and a truck we made it to Springfield the very next day so we learned about that on Friday made it to Springfield by Saturday morning checked in at Campus Inn and they'll tell you where to go. So every step along the way, your fleet manager or someone from the messaging app will instruct you on where to go. For me, it was Campus Inn. 
I checked in. I spent the day with Terry, uh, my instructor, um, tying up a couple loose ends, unloading all my stuff from his truck, setting up a dash cam. <clears throat> um, we grabbed a bite to eat. Check out his channel. It's really, really informative. I think he just put up a video about winter driving tips. So, um, very useful information. So then Terry was on a load over to Massachusetts, which meant that by the next morning he was already gone. And I was here with all my stuff piled high on this bed. I've since cleaned it up um, and that was Saturday. So my first class was on Sunday morning. It's called the Upgrade Class, AKA ACE 1. That started at 7 a.m. in the Sim Lab of Campus Ed. We watched safety videos. We took several assessment or one one mate one big assessment where you have to drive through uh, scenarios in the simulator and then you get tested. Uh, your backing gets tested, <clears throat> and so I passed that. And once that was done, there were about forty CBTs that had to be completed. And some of them were repeats from orientation, which I completed in May. But a lot of them were specific to my path forward, which is lease. I imagine if I were company, a lot of those CBT would be uh, CBTs would be company specific. Um, but I started on those CBTs on Sunday. Monday morning, you got to look at the schedule that they give you in the upgrade class because it's very specific and it'll tell you your instructor may say yep just uh, go to class on Monday and then you finish up on Tuesday but the way the form stated the instructions was that if you took class on the weekend then day two is actually on Monday morning not on Tuesday so Monday morning, Monday ended up being a full day of classes. Monday morning I had the slingshot class, which is least specific. We went over a lot of detail. Um, the corresponding <clears throat> CBTs are, are, you know, they're, they're not cakewalk. There's math involved. You've got to reference several pages in what's called the deal which outlines the deal for the lease, um, the benefits, the responsibilities, etc. So at this point I haven't signed anything. You know, I'm just kind of taking the classes and <clears throat> later that afternoon, um, there were more classes, uh, an automatic transmission class. Um, there was another class in between that um, and then it ended with a representative from uh, Success. No, not Success. It, 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 uh, it Monday ended with a representative from <clears throat> Abacus, the accounting firm that is available here uh, at Prime Springfield for uh, lease ops, owner ops, etc. They provide a ton of accounting services. The information was really useful. Um, I will not be electing to use them, at least not immediately, um, even though I have already set up my LLC, but more on that later. Um, that class ended about, I don't know, maybe five. We went over, so it was about 520 when we all left. And then, uh, then I went back to my uh, my hotel room to do more CBTs. In other words, at that point, I was done with classes, and all I needed to do was complete my CBTs, and then email upgrade at priming.com. And. Don't go ahead and email that 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 address um, at a step because these are instructions that I was following on a you know on a sheet of paper on a schedule that they gave us. So there was a checklist and you just kind of follow it step by step. 
So Tuesday morning came, I got a great night's rest. Tuesday morning came and I finished my CBTs by about 9.30, 10 o'clock. I went ahead and emailed that address. I got a response within 10, 20, 30 minutes and uh, <clears throat> acknowledging the their receipt and confirming that I had completed all of the uh, all of the tasks. And they instructed that I would receive another email from operations with more instructions. Operations then emailed within five minutes stating they've upgraded me to AC and that <clears throat> to use the link in the email that they replied with to check in with success leasing. So I went ahead and I clicked on that, that link. I followed the instructions and boom, I was done. So I was checked in by maybe 1 p.m. on Tuesday. And I was hoping that I'd receive a call. Now, success leasing, based on the representative that visited us, visited us during class, stated that they update the list at 11 a.m. every day and then they assign, then they call people on the list and the people choose which truck to go ahead and check out or to, to, to look at. So I was hoping for a call on Tuesday, but I did not get a call. I took advantage of the downtime to pivot and work on some other uh, important things. I was reviewing a list of items that I would need for the truck in order to make it street legal. And that list of items is available on the uh, in the information that you receive in the class. Um, if you get overwhelmed, check out the Discord group for driver lineup uh, set up by Jenna and Eric. There are a ton of people in there that are extremely helpful. For example, this list of items that I was reviewing on Tuesday afternoon since I didn't get a call included things like load locks, chains, air cuffs, all sorts of stuff that I was like, holy, I've got to buy this stuff. How am I going to pay for it? What's going to happen? And uh, I think it was Uncle Heathens in the Discord group that made it clear to everyone that things on that list get charged to the truck and then you make payments over time. I think it's like 30 bucks a month. Now, Things may change, um, so don't quote me. You know, don't get disappointed if that's not the case or that's not how it unfolds for you. But at least that's what I heard, and that comforted me because uh, I do want something a bit turnkey. Uh, I, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to delay before I get out on the road. So Tuesday night came. I ordered some pizza. It was delicious. Then Wednesday came today. And uh, I'm, by 11 o'clock, I'm sitting there in my bed just refreshing that list uh, on Success Leasing's website. And boom, I see like 10 new trucks. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to get a call. And so every few minutes pass and I keep refreshing and I see new driver codes getting added to the corresponding truck trucks on that list. And I'm like, damn, looks like it's going to be another day. I got a call from my fleet manager, which was awesome. But he kind of chuckled because he's like, hey, sorry to disappoint you. I bet you thought it was success. <laughs> uh, anyway, five minutes after that, I get a call from success. And they're like, hey, take a look on what's left. There were quite a few people in front of you. So um, what's left is what you're able to look at. There were four internationals, which, nope. <clears throat> International is a brand that is has got a pretty solid reputation, but for me, the reason I don't want to choose an international is that that, that manufactured truck has a unique uh, radar system where, you know, if, if it suspects or detects some sort of uh, impending collision in front of you, it won't just alert you. It, it will smash on the brakes. And uh, 
at least on the Freightliner, based on my experience, it's it's a bit more um, gradual. Uh, so that's pretty much the only reason. I like the interior, the way that it's set up. It looks a little bit more refined than the workhorse that Freightliner Cascadias are they're kind of described as. Um, and neither are probably on the level of you know, plush or quality is as Peterbilt. I mean, they're all comparable, but you know, it's um, it is what it is. Um, Peterbilt's have a smoother ride. They've got bigger airbags on the drives, uh, driveline tires. Uh, anyway, so um, there was one Freightliner left, and the photo was. I don't know who took the photo, but let me tell you, don't quit your J job. You know. Hopefully you're not like a wedding photographer because you're not going to make it, bro. Poor girl. So I was like, yeah, I'll take the Freightliner. She's like, well, look at the list. I need the truck number so that we're on the same page. I don't want any confusion. So I told her the truck number. She's like, all right, keys are in the truck. Um, here's the code. She gave me the code. Um, and uh, I immediately hopped on the uh, shuttle campus into the Millennium Building and I looked at the truck um, and uh, you know I wasn't <laughs> I'm not the biggest fan of the color it's kind of like it looks way better in person I'm gonna take a few more pictures of it later and whatever down the line um, but it's kind of it's like it's kind of like a pumpkin spice like a pumpkin spice I don't even know what to call it it's it's the picture makes it look kind of muddy, but it's definitely more like a pumpkin spice latte. Like, uh, it, it's cool. I'm not a fan of the designs. I asked success, and they're like, nope, it's got to stay on. <clears throat> you can add stuff if you want. You can change the color, but you can't take off the design that is on there. And it's it looks a little bit fancy for my taste. Um, it's got, I don't know, it's kind of fancy calligraphy style, like, whatever. But uh, I already called Stripes and Stuff. It's a local place that specializes in uh, custom decals and graphics and wraps. So I may go ahead and ask them, like, help me out. I need this to kind of not look so basic. <laughs> Um, so they were cool. They provided me an email address. I'm going to send them photos, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and then I went back into success leasing, and uh, I asked her a couple questions. Uh, that question about the uh, the uh, decals, and then the uh, or the graphics, and then I asked her uh, if I could time an order of a lease, lease purchase truck with the end of this truck's lease, which this truck that I'm, that I took and the lease ends at, uh, I think next July, July 22. And she's like, yeah, you put a grand down with the order. You should probably time it around February or March. Um, and then, uh, that'll, that'll time the arrival of the of the truck with the end of the lease so you get the lease completion so you get money for completing the lease um, they've already replaced the tires so <clears throat> I'm sure that the tire fund is probably somewhat depleted the previous tire fund um, but I thought sweet and then you pay the remaining 13 grand for the lease purchase uh, upon receipt of the truck or upon arrival of the truck in July because it looks like it takes five months-ish from the order point, or the date of order. So that's going to be my plan. I told her one thing I wanted to look at was the any the accident reports. And she's like, yeah, sure, let me go ahead and get you the uh, maintenance records. She, like, taps away. Like, she's, like, on her A game. Like, she, she definitely knows what she's doing. I think her name is Brittany. That's success walks over to a printer and comes back with this stack of like 40 pages I was she's like here you go <laughs> and I sat down in their sitting area 
and I spent about an hour pouring over the maintenance records. And what I was looking for, now this, the, the records include things like uh, accident reports, uh, everything that was fixed from the truck's inception. And what I was looking for was anything major, you know, anything major like drivetrain replacements, you know, the frame, um, <clears throat> suspension. And fortunately, all I saw, it took me about an hour, an hour and 20 minutes to pour over each page. There's a ton of information. Um, and all I saw was uh, a couple minor dings, uh, you know, tire replacements, uh, a fender replacement, um, no major accidents. And uh, so that was promising. And then uh, once I felt good about that, oh, I also test drove it. So I test drove it around campus and it smooth, smooth as butter. Um, I imagine that a brand new truck is not gonna be as smooth because you gotta break it in. I don't know. Um, that's my experience with like pickup trucks. Um, and it, based on the three trucks that I've driven here, or over the past four months, all Freightliners, that seems to be the case. Um, this truck has about 300,000 miles, um, 370,000 miles. I know that's a lot, but it is what it is. I felt good about the truck. The accident, the uh, maintenance records look good. Um, it's still under warranty. And so, uh, so I took it. So then she gave me an inspection list, which was like another 12 pages, which I still have. I went into the truck, spent another couple hours pouring over each item on the checklist and inspecting the truck, making sure that I documented everything. Now, not everything is going to be fixed, like unless it's like safety related um, or something critical needed for the truck to get on the road. Um, you know, I think they're going to say, look, if it's a cosmetic issue where you got a little ding or a scuff mark, just make sure it's noted so that when the lease gets completed and you turn the truck in, you're not charged for it. So that's where I left everything. Um, the truck is still on campus. Um, she sent the lease contract over the Prime app. So I was able to pull that up and... Uh, like 55 pages um, and uh, I thought you know what let me go home or home. let me come to the to the uh, hotel room and uh, pour over that contract you get three days from receipt to sign the contract and the contract doesn't start your lease doesn't start until you sign it uh, I don't imagine taking three days now I did try to print the 55 pages into a PDF but for some reason it's Erroring out on the app. I'm hoping that's just temporary so that I can print it out and um, not like physically print it out, but you know, send it to one of my buddies who's kind of helping me out, just kind of checking things over, um, dotting my I's, crossing my T's, all that good stuff. I'm also in communication with uh, a couple of people that I finished TNT with. Um, and uh, they've been really helpful, you know, just with encouraging words, updating me on what their status is, what they're doing, what they plan on doing, any recommendations or heads up and, you know, vice versa. I've been sharing with them. So, yeah, um, that's all I got for now. Uh, I uh, do a little flip around here. Um, I've got all my stuff packed. Uh, the room is pretty much ready to roll uh, for the next student. Uh, but yeah, as soon as I sign this lease and then take the inspection report, over Bay 47, um, I believe that's when uh, I should I should get the green light. Um, I still got to get some items. I've got a fridge at home 
I plan on running a couple of weeks before I go home to pick up the fridge, so I will be running without a fridge. I'll probably get like a styrofoam cooler to hold me over in the meantime. Uh, what else? Things like a microwave. Um, I'm going to cross that bridge tomorrow because I think the campus store, uh, the shop, it doesn't open until tomorrow morning again. And uh, if I can get anything there, if they've got it in stock, I'd like to go ahead and make sure that, you know, that's that's built in the truck, things like the load locks, the chains. I stopped at Walmart on my way here to get some bungee cords for the chains. I'm not going to get into that. Um, if you come to Prime or whomever's listening, this is geared more towards new people, new drivers. They're going to go over this in class. Uh, the bungee cords for the chain and all that jazz. <laughs> um, but yeah. That's the upgrade process in a nutshell. Um, I hope this video was helpful. If you've got any questions, please reach out. I'm going to put my contact information in the description. Um, there is no stupid question. I think the only stupid question are those that are left un uh, unasked. So uh, feel free to reach out. Like the video if you thought it was helpful so that other people can... Uh, uh, get a chance of checking it out. Subscribe if you want to get any uh, future videos. Um, and yeah, um, no matter what's going on, remember, tomorrow's always a new day. I hope you guys stay safe out there.